It's just after 8.30 Central African time. Good evening and welcome to Sport on Prime. I'm Simon Burke. This is what's happening in your world of sport. And we begin with an interview. The Rainbow Beauty of Hashim Amla, written by Niren Tolsi, is an incredible essay that was published a few months ago. It's a piece of work that talks about Hashim and where he comes from, how he is perceived, and where he wants to see the Proteas going, amongst other things. And it's all set against the backdrop of South Africa and the journey our country is still on and joining me in studio now is the author Niren Tulsi. Niren, welcome to the program. Thank you. I hope I got the, the summary right, because it took me a, a while to read that. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as long as, as a five-day test match to, to, to read. No, but absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Um, and uh, quite honest, uh, an honest assessment. Why did you choose Hashim as uh, the subject? Um, well, I mean, various reasons, personal, political. Uh, politically, I think he embodies a lot of um, the aspects of, of, of our democracy and, and the journey is on. Um, I'm kind of reminded of uh, the words of former Deputy Chief Justice Dikhan Moseneke um, about um, democracy not being a straight line between two mm. places. It's kind of um, a jagged and irregular. And, yeah. uh, and I think uh, Amla and how he's uh, emerged into the South African team, how he was initially received and how he is received now to the point of having the Amla army, etc. Yes. Um, you know, I th I th it kind of speaks to the, 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 the slippery road that is our democracy. Um, yeah. yeah. But I mean, in terms of the whole transformation debate, mm -hmm. um, people like to pigeonhole things. And yeah. Hashim maybe fits perfectly into a little... Uh, you know, he's the number three batsman, he's Indian, mm -hmm. he ticks a lot of boxes and we just leave him there and yeah. so he will be there until the end of his career. Yeah. Is, is, uh, that's the sense I got from reading the book, is, uh, from, the, from your essay, yeah. is that, that that's kind of how South Africa deals with uh, transformation in sport. Uh, being reductive and being amnesiac. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it works in very, it, it's very interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm coming back to the judiciary you now. I, I remember the Judicial Service Commission sat last week interviewing prospective judges, and they talk about black, generic black, uh, in terms of our racial classification. And we seem to do a similar thing in sports as well, kind of uh, very narrowly define our sportsmen without looking for the complexities and the nuances mm. that they kind of represent. Um, and also, I mean, when it comes to transformation, for example, it's a, I mean, as you would know, a lot of, uh, uh, well, pretty much all of the black South Africans who've played test cricket for South Africa, aside from Umfuneko and Gum, have come through an elite sp school sports system. Yes. So it is, transformation is as much about race as it is about uh, class yes. as well. Yeah. Uh, and we live in an abnormal, unequal society. Yeah. So and you, you make the point in the essay that his brother was five years ahead of mm -hmm. him and didn't have the same opportunities he did. And yeah. that made the difference. Because in Hashim's words, his brother was more talented, was, a better sport? was the better sport. Yeah. I, mean, the family. I, I mean, his brother was good enough to, to play for the Kaiser and Dolphins, mm. etc. But, uh, but obviously, I mean, I mean that, that gap uh, meant that he didn't have access to the kind of schooling and the kind of institutional um, training um, that came with yeah. Amla going to DHS. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that, that's still reserved for, for a for few. Very few and yeah. um, also, it's given out as a bursary to an exceptional black athlete. Yeah. It then comes into an environment that is not his, and he has to uh, adapt yeah. and assimilate yeah. to, to that. And uh, how do they get on in life? Uh, how did how did uh, this shape Hashim um, going on? Well, I, I mean, I think I mean it's it's interesting. I think the profile of the South African national team is also changing over time. Uh, you know, it's it's moved from kind of uh, uh, a, a very white conservative personality to through what would Jesus do to kind of something that is a lot yes. more uh, multi multi personality, multicultural. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean it, it, it's a slow process. So I mean, but I, there was a concerted effort. You yeah. write about that in about 2010 yeah. that they were going to address it as players and try and figure out how. Do they yeah. make sure that they're um, inclusive and sure. appeal to everybody? Yeah, because not just from a marketing point of view, yeah. but but to be the team of South Africa yeah. above the pro uh, yeah. the Springboks or the the yeah. Bafana Bafana. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I suppose they they interpreted the Proteas more than just a logo on their shirt. Mm. It became kind of a metaphor. They they they, they looked into um, how 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 a Protea is reborn after after fire, etc. Adverse and uh, how it responds to adversity. Um, so so those kind of characteristics. Became, became to de 
define the South African national cricket team. Mm. Um, and at the same time, from what my interview with, 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 with Hashim, um, I got the sense that they also want to kind of free themselves a little bit from the conservatism of the past. Yes. And actually play a more attacking brand of cricket, which you're kind of seeing with the likes of Quentin de Kock um, and Amla. I mean, although he's been batting a bit more conservatively more recently, but I, I suppose the, the situation has dictated that. But uh, there's certainly... Uh, they, we're a loud, vibrant country, and I think yeah. the Proteus team want to kind of try and somehow encapsulate that in the way that they play the cricket, yeah. Um, the you also spoke about perhaps uh, that he won't be remembered uh, up with the Pollock and, and Cullis. Um, why, why did you mention that? And then because because the, the, the South African media has a long way to go to reconstruct itself. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we see that in politics, we see that in, uh, uh, in sport as well. Uh, we're not very woke as journalists to yeah. use the parlance of the youngins. Well, we sports journalists. <laughs> we don't know anything else. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. I, mean, it's, I mean, it was quite interesting. And I mentioned this earlier this week. Um, when I was in, at Newlands, um, some, some South African journalists couldn't understand why, um, why the vilification of, 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 of the sexual history of David Warner's wife mm. was a problem. Uh, you know, it, it, to them it was just banter. Yes. A misogyny uh, and it's other aspects just don't, don't yeah, come into from, it. You know, the, yeah. The, the, yeah, as you say, chirping, um, yeah. schoolboys chirping in, in, the, in the cricket field. Um, so where do we go from here? What, what's the, the light at the end of the tunnel? And, and how does Hashim um, you know, present himself? Sure, is, I think that's a question for Amla and for <laughs> Otis Gibson, really. Yeah. Uh, I can't speak for them, but uh, having watched the South African cricket team for a long time, um, I, I suppose it, you know, sport is a very fragile, precious thing, mm. and it can change very easily and, and swiftly. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, is everybody welcome at a cricket stadium now? It, um, it, 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 would people feel out of place? Is it, is it a still an exclusive kind of... Um, I, th I think Cricket South Africa can do more because there is a potential to really make an like, egalitarian sport that reaches out to a lot of people. I'm mm. already seeing um, uh, you know, uh, black families coming to watch test cricket yeah. a lot more um, in, at, at the Wonders, for example. Um, I, so I think that, that people want to affiliate with the team. They want to support the team. Uh, but what's needed is, a, is proper development that's going to reach out to as many the black youngsters as possible. Yeah. And, and class should not, sorry, sh class should not yeah. come into it. Um, yeah, uh, and geography should not come into it either. Well, I, mean, I, I recommend everyone read this uh, essay of yours, Niran Tulsi. Thank you very much you. for joining us and, and helping us to unpack some of the huge issues. Oof, it's, we've <laughs> just scratched the surface, really. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a very quick break, but we'll be right back.